because I'm dying to get to this story. It's huge yeah. over in the UK and it involves GB News where I appear once a week on the show of this guy, Dan Wooten. And Dan's been on our show many times as a royal commentator. He wrote for years for The Sun, then for the Daily Mail, and now he has the most popular show on GB News. And I really wanted to get to this because it's absolutely exploding in the UK and it involves a friend of mine. Um, here's what happened. This actor, very successful actor and now political commentator, Lawrence Fox, and, and he's sort of been political in the UK for a while now, goes on Dan's show. And he is asked to comment on, on comments made by a woman, a political journalist over there named Ava Evans. So I'm gonna set it up. Ava Evans had made remarks, I would submit quite callously on the epidemic of male suicide. And then Dan and Lawrence Fox wound up talking about it. So here's Ava Evans's comments that are gonna lead to this firestorm that could get both of these guys fired. All right, watch. I think that it feeds into the culture a little bit, this Minister for Men argument. Like, In my mind, I think there should be a Minister for Mental Health, which would be all-encompassing. I mean, you've got something like 7 million children waiting for prescriptions for mental health at the moment. It's a crisis that's endemic throughout the country, not specific to men. And I think, you know, a lot of ministers kind of bandy this about to sort of, I'm sorry, but make an enemy out of women. So she's suggesting that to have a minister of men who would be overseeing, in, for, well, for one thing, the male suicide crisis would be some sort of making an enemy, way of making an enemy out of women, as opposed to taking a moment to actually get into, wait, why is that necessary? What's happening with men? And there is a male suicide crisis. Um, and we can get into the details of it. We've covered it on our show. There really is. I'll just give you a couple numbers. In the United States, men make up 49% of the population, 80% of the successful suicides, the completed, I guess is a better word, suicides. They're far more likely to com complete a suicide and far less likely to either be diagnosed with depression and anxiety, never mind at, at actually seek help for it. And by the way, September happens to be National Suicide Prevention Month. Okay, so that's in that context, she's in the UK, she's not in America, but they have similar numbers over there, exactly the same numbers, actually. She doesn't take a moment to actually acknowledge what's happening. I mean, who among us doesn't know, I doesn't know a, a man who has committed suicide. Like I, I do, um, someone in my family years ago. Anyway, it's just a very touchy issue. You're supposed to say die by suicide now. And she did not treat it gingerly or even respectfully. So understandably, some people were mad. And one of those people was Lawrence Fox. And he he addressed it, I think, with humor, but it was, you know, you'll see crass. Here's what happened when he went on Dan's show. Show me a single self-respecting man that would like to climb into bed with that woman ever, ever, who wasn't an incel, who wasn't a cucked little incel. That little woman has been fed, spoon-fed oppression day after day after day after day, starting with the lie of the gender uh, uh, wage gap. And she sat there and I'm going like, if I met you in a bar and that was like sentence three, chances of me just walking away are just huge. We need powerful, strong, amazing women who make great points for themselves. We don't need these sort of feminist 4.0. They're pathetic and embarrassing. Who'd want to shag that? Total meltdown ensued. It's all over the UK papers. This group Ofcom, it's a government organization that oversees the UK media, is raining a shitstorm down on GB News. GB has now suspended both Lawrence Fox and Dan Wooten, who really just stood there. He just sat there, but he's gotten punished now too. And this is a woman who Glenn has actually written. She sent out a tweet, I think it was last January, calling uh, men, quote, the most powerful virus of them all. So no problem for her to say that, no problem for her to be insensitive toward the male suicide crisis. Lawrence Fox deals with it with a crass, humorous, attempted humor, you know, attempt. And he's about to lose his job 100%. And they just announced today that Dan Wooden was fired from the Daily Mail, which isn't even where the conversation happened. So what do you make of the whole offense? I feel like it's, it's both complicated and important. First of all, I do think this issue of this crisis among young men in particular in the West, and it's not just suicide, it's, you know, depression, and anxiety and addiction and alcoholism and just like a general sense of being lost, you know, like having no place in society, no purpose, no sense of uh, fulfillment. 
I think it's a very serious one. There's like a lot of people doing really great work. There's this young woman who does, who came from the left uh, called Shoe on Head. I don't know if you had her on her show. She covers this, this crisis a lot, and especially the kind of left wing contempt for men that it often provokes, including aimed at her. Like, who cares? They get what they deserve. They're just angry because they don't get to have women as their sex toys anymore and just like mo- makes a mockery of it in a way that this political commentator in the West did. There's a great documentary by Alex Lee Moyer, who just did the documentary on Alex Jones, who before that did one on this kind of incel culture and the way we should mock these people as being misogynists and a lot of like socioeconomic pressures that are being placed on young men in the West as to why they're so lost to have these kind of pathologies. So I think to make light of it and to talk about it in this very callous way, the way this political commentator in the UK did, I understand completely why that generates a lot of anger. I share that anger when I hear her saying that. I do, though, think that we can, on the one hand, push back against the excesses of forcing people to speak in a certain way while still having some standards. Like, I just think a line that you just should observe is that if a woman enters public life and speaks on a particular policy issue, no matter how angry that you you are, you can attack her, you can criticize her the way you would anyone else, including a man. But to talk about her as somebody who's not worth your having sex with, how you would never get into bed with her, how she's just so repulsive that no man would ever sleep with her. I don't know. I find it gross and degrading. I just don't think that's like a way that we need to be thinking about women. It reminds me a little bit of the commentary you had on Russell Brand that I really like. I was one of the people saying he deserves due process. He shouldn't be assumed to be guilty. But you don't have to go to the other extreme and start talking about these women in the most degrading way possible, assuming they're liars. You know, that they're just every woman now who makes an accusation like this deserves to be hated and assumed to be conniving. There is this kind of misogynistic element that runs through that discourse that both of them seem to share. Even the host did kind of laugh about it and claimed he didn't, but then had sent a note right after saying, oh, I loved what you said. But then you get to the backlash to it, which is let's get this government agency involved. Let's ensure that their lives are ruined, that their careers are over, that they should be fired where I also start feeling very uncomfortable. You know, there can be this middle ground between saying these kind of comments I personally find disgusting. I don't appreciate this sort of discourse, but it doesn't mean that the government should get involved. It doesn't mean that they should lose their jobs. So I think, unfortunately, there was this very important issue that we should be spending a lot more time talking about that a lot of people are talking about in a very good way that does often produce this really crass, callous reaction. And it all got kind of sidetracked because... Lawrence Fox decided to make it about whether any man would want to sleep with this woman. And uh, I don't know, I kind of understand the visceral reaction to that discourse, but now I find myself siding with them because I think the reaction is so extreme. It's so funny because, so I think I, you and I sort of came in on the Russell Brand thing in a very similar way, um, but maybe diverged on whether he should be defended or resurrected. Um, but I, I think we diverge again here because I have to tell you, I was not offended by what Lawrence Fox said. I wasn't. It's not like I would have said it myself, but I've had so much worse said about me. I mean, my God, go back and take a look at what happened, speaking of presidential debates, after that first one with Trump. Uh, it's not pleasant. You know, there, yes, there can be sort of a sexism tinge in some of the comments, but this, what I think he was trying to say, he was angry he was angry about her blowing off the fact that, I mean, here in the United States, it's 35,000 men a year who die by suicide and no one gives a shit about them. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like not even okay mm-hmm. to be a man anymore. Uh, and mm-hmm. so he was angry exactly. and he was trying to say, this woman couldn't be more unattractive to me. She is ugly. She's ugly in her soul. That's what I think he was feeling, that she has a dark heart and I reject her on a visceral level. That's- if he had been more articulate in the moment, that's probably what he would have said. You know, he's an entertainer, so he went a different way. Um, and I, I like we're pretending that she's this delicate flower who can't hear it. You know, who's like, oh my god, he someone said something offensive about me, and I just feel like it's not great. But it's this is not a fireable offense, and for everyone to like the government to be raining a shitstorm down on him. Whereas I see the Russell Brand stuff as much, much more problematic. He's was allegedly sleeping with a 16 year old when he was 31. Totally different. That's not like saying one offensive thing that that had a tinge of jest in it. And by the way, the same woman over here is now like 
claimed to be so offense, offended, she's got a long history of saying this exact kind of stuff. Negative dings on credit reports happen to all sorts of people from all sorts of socioeconomic backgrounds. Understanding the credit landscape can be extremely tough, and spending the time to dispute and repair these so-called dings can be a full-time job. Good luck to you if you already have one of those, or you have kids, or you have any sort of a life. For starters, you have to deal with three separate credit bureaus. It's a massive headache, and it's unpleasant. It's also a common misconception that people with poor credit scores are just people who just don't pay their credit card bills. These can be hardworking middle-class people who are negatively affected by divorce, identity theft, medical debt, student loans. But if you do not address negative credit items, they can haunt you for years, for years and years to come. And when it counts the most, like getting a mortgage at a competitive rate. And we know that being relegated to the status of a renter versus homeowner is a huge obstacle people face in trying to move their family up in economic class over the course of their lifetime. The good news is that our new sponsor, Lexington Law, can help you if you're in this position. Go to LexingtonLaw.com. Start today with a free consultation and review. Tell them Megan sent you at LexingtonLaw.com. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.